My job was to meet a girl, go on a few dates, sleep with her, test if she's quality, get her to fall in love with me to where she'd do anything I say, and then get her on webcam so we could become rich together. And a lot of you watching this are probably thinking this is all bullshit. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. But you do need to look at the cult that you've been roped into and behind the, the glitz and glamour of his little online persona. What's up guys, John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. In today's video, we're gonna be going through a news article by Vice, okay, exclusive. Andrew Tate was arrested on suspicion of rape in the UK in 2015. There's some allegations put forth by some girls. Okay, one girl is saying she was raped by Andrew Tate. Another girl said she witnessed the rape. One of the girls says she witnessed uh, him choking multiple girls. This is all alleged, according to these girls. And lots of interesting stuff in here. Okay, so we're gonna go through that. And it should be noted that Vice is putting out a full documentary on January 12th, where they had undercover news reporters join the war room and join, uh, or actually like visit Andrew Tate's house in Romania, okay, last summer. Before we jump into that, I wanna let you guys know we're running our next big approach breakthrough challenge on January 20th, 21st, and 22nd. It's a Friday through Sunday. The three-day event, it's $27 for general admission and then an additional $97 to upgrade to VIP. General Mission gets you access to all three days. You'll get the full training for my entire cold approach system. Nothing held back. I go f much further into detail and depth than what I cover on YouTube. Uh, we had a couple thousand people join in the last one. And if you sign up for the VIP, you get lifetime access to the recordings. You get like some bonus training. You get additional Q&A sessions with me, bonus day. There's a whole bunch of extra stuff. It's all explained on the website in the description, so go check that out. Okay, so let's jump right in here. Andrew Tate was arrested on suspicion of rape in the UK in 2015, seven years before his arrest in Romania. Uh, by the way, if you're not aware, Andrew Tate is currently in a detention center in Romania, okay, for like the next three weeks. A judge ordered him and Tristan, as well as two girls to help them run the webcam business, uh, to be detained for 30 days, okay? And then there might be a trial. It's not clear right now. But it says, seven years before his arrest in Romania, Andrew Tate was investigated over allegations of sexual assault and physical abuse in the UK, during which time he appeared on Big Brother for five days. But UK authorities declined to prosecute. Okay. Um, Notorious influencer Andrew Tate was arrested on suspicion of sexual assault and physical abuse in 2015, while him and his brother were running a webcam sex business out of the UK. Vice World News can reveal. It comes after Tate and his brother Tristan were remanded in custody in Romania until the end of January after being arrested by anti-organized crime police as part of a rape and human trafficking investigation. The Tate brothers lawyer is appealing the court order extending their detention. Two women told Vice World News they were violently abused, one raped, the other repeatedly strangled by Andrew Tate, and that UK police and the Crown Prosecution Service mishandled their case, leaving him free to rise to global fame on the back of his unchecked misogyny. Police took four years to pass their investigation to the Crown Prosecution Service, and uh, basically the, that was the organization whose job involves in assessing whether there's a realistic prospect of conviction, at which point the CPS declined to prosecute. In a statement issued via his lawyer in Romania, Tate denied assault or rape. Romanian police said in late December 2022 that they'd identified six people who were allegedly sexually exploited by an organized criminal group that recruited victims via false displays of affection known as the so-called lover boy method, forcing women to perform pornographic content via physical violence and mental coercion. Okay, that was from the Romanian police. According to one woman Vice World News spoke to, whom we're calling Sally, Tate used a similar method of emotional and physical control in his UK webcam business in 2015 before relocating to Romania, but the CPS declined to prosecute the case. When I saw that he was arrested in Romania, I was shocked and didn't know how to react. I cried. Everything I read is what I told the police at the time of the complaint. If the CPS had just pulled their finger out, none of this would have happened, Sally said. Vice World News is withholding the woman's identity to prevent harassment and trolling by Tate's supporters. Okay, I'm sure there's, there would be a lot of trolling. He has a little call army that he's built. And watch my video on the end screen where I dress up as the top G himself. Okay, bo full bald head, mask and all. And, and reveal some other facts that you may not have known. Okay, you can see that video on the end screen. A uh, second woman whom we're calling Helen said she was happy something has been done, but not completely hopeful as he's walked free from his sexual assaults before. I've been very frustrated by the British police and court system for a long time. They could have stopped him from doing the exact same abuse to these women in Romania. Helen's identity is also being withheld to protect her from harassment and trolling by Tate supporters. While Tate was released under investigation by Hertfordshire police following the women's complaints, 
meaning he was suspected of a criminal offense and a police probe was ongoing. He appeared as a contestant on the reality TV show Big Brother in 2016. Producers were informed by police of the ongoing investigation, but kept him on the show for five days before removing him. During that time, he was shown playing truth or dare in the hot tub and kissing one of the female contestants. Channel 5 said at the time that Tate had been removed from the Big Brother house because of information which came to light. Press reports linked his outsting, ousting from the house to a video that had surfaced of him slapping his ex-girlfriend and then beating her with a belt, a narrative that Tate himself would later encourage. Public outrage eventually simmered down after Tate released a video of his ex saying it was all part of a consensual kinky game. But what the public didn't know and what Vice World News can now report is that contrary to claims at the time, the real reason Tate was removed was due to the sexual assault and physical abuse investigation that had been shared with producers five days prior. Asked about its handling of the complaint, Bonage UK, which owns Endemol Shine, the production company behind Big Brother, said that after being informed by police of their investigation on the 8th of June, 2016, it began a process of extensive consultation with Channel 5 and legal teams, including the lawyers representing Andrew Tate. The company said that Tate was closely monitored at all times during this period while they sought to clarify the detail required by Channel 5 on the police investigation before he was removed from the house on the 13th of June. Sally and Helen spoke extensively to Vice World News because they say they want the world to know the true extent of Tate's abusive and exploitative uh, behavior, exploitative behavior, especially as the British American kickboxer known as the King of Toxic Masculinity has in recent months became one of the most Google names on the planet. Helen told us, I hope and pray he's finally arrested for his disgusting abuse and crimes against young women, and I can finally exist without having to see and hear the person who degraded and raped me all over the internet. The survivors' interviews will be included in an upcoming Vice World News documentary about Andrew Tate. And then they had a couple of reporters that visited Tate's compound in Romania in the summer of 22, gained access to their secret society, otherwise known as the War Room. Okay? And I watched, this is a couple minute clip where it shows, basically they're releasing a, a full documentary on January 12th. His poisonous attitudes towards women are no secret, and he was deplatformed from multiple social media accounts, although some struggled to remove clips featuring Tate uploaded by other users. Following Elon Musk's takeover of Twitter, Tate's Twitter profile was restored, but the women we spoke to say his track record of misogynic, misogynistic abuse is far worse than what's previously been known. To suddenly see him pop up on TikTok just made me really angry, said Sally of Tate's prominence on social media. I think it was because, like, people don't know what he's done. For the record, I heard a lot of fucking, you know, shady shit behind the scenes. Who knows what's true and, and what's not. Some of what's being put into the, the public uh, news is, is being corroborated with stuff I've heard. But, and again, who's to, who's to know? Okay, but this will all be sorted out soon enough i assume sally told vice world news that she was strangled by tate at least five times and saw him choke other women on at least 10 occasions attacking them in sudden outbursts of violence the attacks allegedly occurred when the women were working for tate's webcam business in luton england in 2015. me and another girl would wake up in the morning with these like red i can only describe them as freckles around our eyes it was from when he choked us choked me so hard that my blood vessels had literally just burst Around the same time as Sally said she was abused, one of her coworkers, Helen, was allegedly raped by Tate in a sexual assault that Sally claims to have witnessed. Helen went public with the allegation in a TikTok video in 2022, but said it was quickly taken down by TikTok after being reported by masses of Tate supporters. And a lot of you watching this are probably thinking this is all bullshit. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. But you do need to look at the cult that you've been roped into and behind the, the glitz and glamour of his little online persona. Okay, it, you know, People are giving details here. Who knows if it's true or not, but it doesn't look good. The women filed criminal complaints with the UK's Hertfordshire police shortly after the abuse allegedly occurred in 2015, but the police investigation was struck by remarkable delays, for which police subsequently apologized to the women before the case finally was sent to a lawyer at the CPS four years later, in July of 2019. The CPS, whose job involves in assessing whether there is a realistic prospect of conviction, told Vice World News, they determined the case did not meet our legal test and there was no realistic prospect of a conviction, despite Sally having allegedly been an eyewitness to Helen's rape. When Vice World News put these allegations to Tate, he responded via a lawyer to deny that he physically abused Sally and to deny that he raped Helen. They wanted money because I fired them, Tate said via his lawyer from Romanian custody. The police understood after the investigation that I'm innocent and the police found messages from the girls' phones where they were talking between themselves and planning to lie about me. The women told us that Helen received a letter from the CPS informing her that voice notes Helen and Sally exchanged informed the decision not to charge Tate. According to Sally and Helen, they discussed in the voice notes whether they should tell police that Tate gave them alcohol. They decided to do so, they said, because according to them, that, that is what happened. 
at the time when the women made their complaint against Tate, it was common for police forces in England and Wales to demand that sexual assault survivors hand over their phones so that police could search them for any private messages that could undermine their claims. The UK government had pledged in recent years, has pledged, to ensure the police do not unduly pressure victims to get their agreement to hand over phone data. Sally and Helen said they no longer have these voice notes, and Vice World News has not been able to independently review them. Asked about the voice notes specifically, a CPS spokesperson would only say there were a number of evidential issues that led us to conclude our legal test was not met. In 2019, the same year CPS declined to bring charges against Tate, UK newspaper The Guardian reported on a CPS seminar wherein the CPS Director of Legal Services Greg McGill and the Director of Public Prosecutions, legal advisor Neil Moore, urged prosecutors to take a proportion of weak cases out of the system to improve conviction rates. One prosecutor who had attended the seminar claimed staff were told if we took 350 weak cases out of the system, our conviction rate goes up to 61%. The Guardian reported that the CPS did not challenge the reported language used by the officials and said the seminars were part of an ongoing training to ensure our prosecutors have access to the latest information on new and refreshed legal guidance. According to Rape Crisis England and Wales, only one in 100 rapes in the UK result in a charge, let alone a conviction. Andrea Simon, director of the End Violence Against Women Coalition, a UK-based group that has campaigned to improve how the justice system handles sexual violence cases, told Vice World News that the police's handling of the women's complaints was unacceptable. A four-year wait for the police to refer a case to the CPS is particularly shocking and an unacceptable failing, she said. In this time frame, Andrew Tate was able to continue building his profile, wealth, and status with stints on national TV and a growing online presence. She said the case underlined how sexual assault survivors were routinely being failed by a broken justice system that has a problem with institutional misogyny. Inaction sends a clear message that those perpetrating violence against women can do so with impunity. Sad. Both survivors who had been warned by officers of the challenges of securing convictions in rape cases were nevertheless devastated by the decision and angered by what they perceive as the police's mishandling of their case. Not only did they feel that the authorities had failed to deliver justice for the abuse they'd suffered, they had effectively allowed Tate to carry on his abusive path without consequences. Tate subsequently started a new webcam business in Romania that is now the subject of an organized crime investigation and built a large social media business empire by peddling an abusive and misogynistic gospel of alpha masculinity to an audience of, I'll insert the word impressionable, men and teenage boys. Tate is now known for making millions of dollars selling online courses that promise to teach his millions of young followers the secrets to modern wealth creation. He also ran a course called the Pimp and Hose Degree, which instructs men on how to recruit women for webcam work using manipulation. The methodology is similar to the lover boy method that Romanian authorities claim he and his brother used to abuse women. Tate has made no secret of using the exploitive, exploitative lover boy approach in his webcam business, boasting on since deleted sections of his website that under his business model, over 50% of my employees were actually my girlfriend at the time and of all my girlfriends, none were in the adult entertainment industry before they met me. I quote from Andrew Tate, my job was to meet a girl, go on a few dates, sleep with her, test if she's quality, get her to fall in love with me to where she'd do anything I say and then get her on webcam so we could become rich together, the website said. Tate has previously said that his relocation to Romania was motivated in part by a desire to escape a liberal post-Me Too Western society where men faced greater accountability for sexual assault claims. And then again, Andrew says that it was probably 40% of the reason he moved to Romania because in Eastern Europe, none of this garbage flies, he said in one video clip. If you go to the police and say he raped me back in 1988, they'll say, well, you should have done something about it then. It was Andrew Tate saying this. It's fucking ridiculous. Sally, who was 20 and had never done webcam work before Tate approached her to work for him, said he initially cut a favorable impression when they met. Really, really charming, well-dressed, and attentive. But the realities of working for Tate, mainly out of a dingy flat in Luton, England, didn't live up to the appealing image he presented. The first night she worked for him, she said Tate brought about five bottles of wine. Having never done webcam work before, Sally said she was nervous and got completely drunk. Tate, she believes, didn't drink at all that night. At one point in the evening, as the pair was sitting together in the bed, she said Tate punched her hard in her arm. I went to the bathroom and cried. It really, really hurt to have someone just hit me in the arm for no reason. I was very confused, she said, starting to cry. When she emerged from the bathroom, Tate was super nice and ended up having sex while she was extremely intoxicated. Focusing on the money, Sally said she overlooked Tate's violence and began working for him every night. As soon as he had me my money, I forgot about him hitting me and everything else. Although she can see now that the 15 pounds an hour Tate paid her was a tiny portion of what he profited from her labor. But according to Sally, violence became a frequent feature of life at the flat where she and her colleagues worked. It just got worse over time. He got more verbally abusive, more physical. Tate repeatedly assaulted the women who worked for him, said Sally, choking her on at least five occasions while she witnessed him do the same to her coworkers at least 10 times. The attacks were in keeping with the dominant, controlling pimp persona he cultivated. 
A poster on the walls of their workplace read, if there's ever a problem, if there's ever a glitch, Big Tate won't wait, straight slap a bitch. And then we have him here posing next to this fucking thing. There he is in cartoon caricature with girls. The face are blurred out, so it must have been his actual girls. And he's got this shit about slapping a bitch as he, as he writes, okay? Again, these guys trying to fucking copy Iceberg Slim and shit and, and, you know, be real pimps. Now there's fucking consequences. She said these violent outbursts would occur seemingly at random with no apparent trigger, but occasionally when he accused the women of being late for work. Andrew used to strangle us for literally no reason, she said. She recalls one time when he came into a room and said, which one of you hoes am I going to strangle today? Couldn't believe that that was our life, you know, but it just seemed really, really normal for us, even though it wasn't. The alleged abuse took other forms as well. I saw him smack girls with a belt. I witnessed him doing it to one of the girls I was staying with because she wanted a lie in. He came upstairs and just started whipping her with a belt. On another occasion, she said she witnessed Tate rape her friend Helen. She said she had taken a shower when she came back in the bedroom to find Tate sexually assaulting her friend. We went to sleep in the same bed with Andrew, but this time the girl Helen had a partner, so she was not interested in Andrew at all. I had gone to the shower while I came back, and I noticed he, he was like, I saw him raping her. Helen stopped working for Tate shortly after the assault, and about two weeks later, Sally decided she had had enough too. I just wanted to get out of that situation, Sally said. She recalls Tate threatening to beat her up in a bathroom. He said, I don't give a fuck if you call the police, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. That's kind of when I knew, you know, I had to go with her. That's also when the women went to the police. But if they were hoping to see their alleged abuser swiftly brought to justice, they'd be sorely disappointed. What was even more traumatizing for the women was that after Tate was released under investigation, he appeared on Big Brother on Channel 5, giving him his first major public exposure and a valuable stepping stone on his path to fame. Then when he went into Big Brother, that's when the Hertfordshire police started to take things seriously because they're like, he's on TV, we need to get him out. Police confirmed to Vice World News that they contacted the show's producers about the investigation of Tate in June 2016. We reached out to Ben Ajay UK in a statement. A spokesperson said, as soon as we were made aware by Hertfordshire police on 8th of June 2016 that he's being investigated, that we had him monitored and he was removed from the house on 13th of June. When Vice World News reach, reached out to the Hertfordshire police about the allegations, they responded with the following statement. We acknowledge there were some delays in the investigation. This was addressed at the time and apologies were made. The case was only closed in late 2019 after a case file had been sent to the Crown Prosecution Service and they took the decision not to prosecute. All those involved in the investigation were further updated at that time. The Crown Prosecution Service said, in this case, we carefully reviewed all the evidence provided by the police regarding each complainant and concluded it did not meet our legal test. There was no realistic prospect of a conviction. We sent a letter to each complainant explaining our decision not to charge. The Tate brothers are being detained in Romanian custody until the end of January. Okay. And then it says here, uh, the survivor's interviews will be included in an upcoming Vice World News documentary that's coming out on January 12th. And... You know, you can look out for that. And the reporters access the war room and access to, Kate, to Tate's compound where he was living. This is just allegations. I want to remind everybody, um, you know, it sounds, in my opinion, true to me, but who knows? Okay, so we will see. Time will tell. Uh, I want to remind you guys, again, it doesn't look good for him at all. And, and I distanced from my, him, myself from him a long time ago once I found out what kind of guy he was and what kind of shit he was doing. Um, and I took a lot of flack for that. People thought, oh, you're just jealous. Oh, you, what are you doing? When I interviewed Andrew and Tristan, I knew nothing about them. Okay, I'd been recommended them through a, a mutual friend. Okay, and then that was it. And then once they like, kind of shot to stardom, and I realized they're running a fucking pyramid scheme, and I heard a lot of shady stuff about them, and I caught, you know, caught them in a bunch of lies, and just heard a lot of really bad stuff. And I was like, you know, these guys sound shady. They sound like bad guys. Andrew was putting out a really bad message to a lot of young, impressionable guys. I, I stated all those things explicitly and distanced myself far away from those guys, blocked them both on WhatsApp and, you know, haven't had contact with them since. And now they're in jail. Okay. Uh, you know, their cars were seized, if you didn't hear about that. And it was also discovered that um, some of the girls had, had been ta had tattooed on their bodies uh, owned by Tate or property of Tate or something like that, which is fucked up as well. Okay, so we'll see what happens here. I'll keep everybody posted once more details come to light. Check out the video I made in the end screen where I dress up as Andrew Tate himself and reveal some other interesting information about him. Also remember we have that challenge coming up. You can go to the link in the description, read about the differences between general admission versus VIP. I highly, highly, highly recommend you join. It's only $27 one time for general admission and you'll get my full cold approach training across three days, it's like a virtual boot camp. Uh, full disclosure, the purpose of us doing this is so we can really blow you away with value so you want to learn the rest of the system. Okay, I, I'll teach you all of cold approach in those three days. 
but then you might want to learn how to run your dates and how to text and how to build your online profile and how to keep girls around and retention and all this other stuff okay so go check out the link in the description let me know what you think about all this tate stuff in the description or in the comments i should say please subscribe and also like the video and i will see you guys in a video soon take care Take a look at the scores, I put numbers up on the boards. I'm in a section with models, and you're at the bar trying to get out of cluster of fours. Fixed drama factor, I'm a boss tycoon. My dick smell like two chicks before noon.